Health officials in Japan have been keeping tabs on the people who worked at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant immediately after the accident. But experts are set to recommend a much more extensive study. They'll propose monitoring the workers for the rest of their lives. The experts have drafted a report for Japan's health ministry. They urge the government to keep track of 19,000 workers to see whether they develop cancer or other illnesses. The people worked at the plant after the accident in March 2011 until December that year when the government announced that the reactors had stabilized. The panel says workers whose radiation exposure exceeded a government limit should undergo regular blood tests. Panel chair Toshiteru Okubo says the survey would provide internationally important knowledge about the impact of radiation on health. If we can conduct a precise survey, the results would serve as a guideline for residents of Fukushima Prefecture in the future. A decades-long decommissioning process is underway at the crippled nuclear plant, but many of the workers who clean up Fukushima Daiichi fear they're being forced to work in unsafe conditions. This edition of Nuclear Watch looks at the way they are hired and managed. NHK Rolls, Yoichiro Tateiwa reports. About 4,000 people work at Fukushima Daiichi every day, but only around a quarter of them are employed by its operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. The majority are contract workers. Tetsuya Hayashi worked there in 2012. I didn't have any contact with TEPCO personnel when I was employed. I don't think any of the workers are directly employed by TEPCO. TEPCO entrusts its prime contractor with providing workers to the plant. Hayashi says in his case, there were also five more subcontractors involved. Hayashi was paid $130 a day by the company at the bottom of the chain. He suspects that at least one of the subcontractors only existed on paper. Hayashi has complained to the Labor Commission of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, claiming the multi-tier contract system is unfair to workers. He says, What's more serious is the lack of consideration for workers' safety. Hayashi shot this footage with a hidden camera. He wanted to gather evidence about the situation he and his co-workers faced. The video shows an official of the company that hired him briefing a group of workers. The official is giving them apparently false information about radiation exposure. Radioactive particles are not going to stay in your body. Any type of radioactive particle has a half-life of seven days. So, even if you work in one millisievert of radiation for several days, it will not affect your health. Hayashi says TAPCO should reconsider the way they hire workers. I don't think anybody would want to work under such a system. TEPCO officials say hiring through contractors is the most efficient way to recruit thousands of workers, especially since they need a wide range of skills. TEPCO set up a company exclusively tasked with decommissioning the damaged reactors last month. Its president says he wants to improve working conditions. Contractors must change how they treat workers. I want them to be responsible for the workers' education and safety. That's essential. But a U.S. nuclear expert who advises TEPCO says the company should hire more workers directly. He thinks that's a key to ensuring an efficient workforce. I think TEPCO is going to have to build their team. So rather than have a thousand and four thousand, a thousand TEPCO four thousand workers, you need to integrate that and have a much bigger TEPCO team that owns it, responsible, and that's their mission. He says TEPCO must establish a fair and transparent employment system. Other experts say 
A shortage of skilled labor may endanger both the decommissioning process and the safety of workers. Yoichiro Tateiwa. Computers world. are pretty hot items these days, and now Japanese researchers have developed unique eyeglasses. These glasses can track your eye movements and then determine how tired or sleepy you are. The product was developed jointly by eyeglass store chain JIN and Tohoku University neuroscientist Yuta Kawashima. Now this is how it works. Small sensors attached to the eyeglasses catch changes in voltage that occur when the eye moves. The glasses are also able to transmit other data, like the number of times users blink and how rapidly. They can help prevent car accidents. They can keep people from getting burned out from overwork. They are also useful for health management. Now, the level of drowsiness is shown in three levels. A driver, for example, can check them to decide when to take a break and avoid an accident. The degree of fatigue is also numerically provided. JIN's executives are hoping to develop demand even among people who don't have to wear glasses. The creator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has pinpointed the source of a radioactive water leak. The water has been escaping from a containment vessel at one of the damaged reactors. This is the first time the exact location of such a leak has been identified. The source is circled in red. The water is dripping from a joint in a pipe coming out of the containment vessel at reactor number three. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say a remote-controlled camera just outside the vessel recorded the video. They say the water is flowing in a continuous stream about the width of two to four pencils. Utility officials believe the water could have become radioactive after being injected into the vessel to cool melted nuclear fuel. TEPCO is also planning to carry out robotic surveys of the other two reactors. Two other reactors, rather. The operator plans to plug the leaks and fill the vessels with water before removing melted nuclear fuel as part of the decommissioning 16th process. Of the 5th, 2014, this is your radioactive reality. Day number 1,162. Any news? New study reveals death and mutations increase sharply from exposure to Fukushima contamination especially at low doses. Small levels of cesium may be significantly toxic. They're talking one trillionth of a microgram causes up to 60% mutations in butterflies. And that's in the cesium alone. Smithsonian, quote, in other words, things don't look good for the animals living around Fukushima. Yet they keep forcing people back pushing people back into these radioactive areas. Go back and live. It's okay. Everything's perfectly under control. Don't mind the nosebleeds. They have nothing to do with Fukushima. <sighs> CNN. Problem from hell at Fukushima. Tons of highly radioactive liquid pouring out of reactor number two each day. More than just number two. Thank you very much. Mysterious explosive bang deep inside. Three areas at bottom may be ruptured. Caroline Kennedy at Plant U.S. will help with the leaks. She brought her 21-year-old son on a three-hour TEPCO tour. Now, if you watch the video of Caroline Kennedy on tour, it seems her visor is the only one where you can't really see her face. So was it really Caroline Kennedy um, touring Fukushima? with that big rad suit on, you can't see her face. But it had a big Kennedy on her suit, right? Uh, we already know the three Coriums have left the building. They are down and in the environment. They can make up these stories all they want. Where's the leak? We don't know. Former official post picks a bloody tissue after daily nosebleed. Quote, you can no longer live in Fukushima. Many suffer due to radiation. Fukushima, Fukushima University professor, impossible to make it so people can live here. It's impossible. Top government spokesman, quote, nosebleeds and nuclear disaster not related. Deny, deny, lie. Medical expert, hundreds ill after Fukushima nuclear plant rubble burned in major Japanese city. That's right, they're putting this nuclear debris into open incinerators 
and burning it all throughout Japan. Well, that picks up and carries across the ocean, now doesn't it? The insanity continues. Uh, HBO, genetic passports for major population exposed to nuclear radiation, question mark? Genetic passports for major population. It has deformed their genes. Sorry, it's a bit of a bummer. Twins attached by organs growing outside body. One-eyed cyclops, babies with giant heads. Uh, they respond to people around them. This is just the beginning, folks. The sad, sad story. Uh, we should have learned at Chernobyl and shut all these down. But, uh, of course, they're pushing for more new plants. Turn them back on. Keep it going. Bizarre creature turned 50 miles of California coast into graveyard in the summer of 2011. Government biologists die off like this, never seen here. Uh, carcasses of starfish and all kinds of other fish down on the bottom. Experts find alterations in 30 genes, some unknown to science. Suddenly proliferating, killing wildlife. Now this is that algae I was telling you about. Um, we wonder how many generations have passed since 2011. Um, the one that excretes this toxin into the water, killing everything. Again, we're just getting started, folks. Japan mother may be jailed for tweet critical of nuclear lobbyist. Fukushima police travel 1,000 miles to interrogate her, examine her computer. We only go outside prefecture for potentially dangerous criminal. They traveled a thousand miles for a tweet. She's that dangerous. We're just getting started, folks. Press conference by former official. I'm bleeding from the nose every day. Many in Fukushima have similar symptoms. Uh, here's one from WIP. Kitty litter blamed for explosive nuclear leak at WIP. Incredibly important to act quickly. All these drums are at risk, including at other sites. Must be gathered right away before they also burst. Summer heat will increase instability. Storage rooms must be sealed off to contain future events. Now they pack all this nuclear waste, rags, whatever, in 55 gallon drums and they, they pack it with kitty litter. Well, they were using clay kitty litter before, but they switched to an organic kitty litter, uh, corn and soy, whatever, um, base, and that had a chemical reaction causing fires and all kinds of other silly things um, that they're talking about right now. Um, they, they have to redo all of this, but that other organic kitty litter's already exposed, and it will be for millions and millions of years. So, what do you do? The insanity continues and they just keep coming up and you know you notice now that there's no mention of collapse that huge burst that busted through all the filters you know oh no it's just a couple of drums on fire don't worry folks the whole thing didn't collapse uh, professor concerns Fukushima is impacting Alaska unusual animals showing up dead seals with unknown disease First cases of avian cholera. Uh, the NOAA, rare whale beachings in Alaska under investigation. What are they running from? Japan paper, mysterious sea creature found one after another along the coast. But don't worry, folks. The food's safe, right? Where do they think they catch a lot of this fish off the coast of Alaska? Japan Times Fukushima fallout in North America at, oh my god, uh, four, and there's 14 zeros behind it, Becquerels of cesium-137, hazardous in a, con in a continental scale, cancer, a certainty if radioactive particle ingested, CBS, Trying to cover the tracks, this is bullshit. Inaccurate internet reports stoked fear radiation had somehow come our way. They're saying, don't worry folks, there's nothing to worry about. Yet they keep finding ever bigger and bigger 
and bigger amounts of this radioactive material farther and farther away. Whip nuclear site may be closed for several years. Explosion of multiple drums suspected. Very much a case for concern. And again, this is about the kitty litter, blah, blah, blah. Top official gives fiery speech calling for public to be told what has happened. DOE refuses to name source of nuclear waste. Well, that's just a big top secret secret now, isn't it? Expert, there's just very few of the birds left in the high contamination from the Fukushima plants. Quote, things are not looking good. Spider webs look strange. Animals' response to radiation over twice as bad as Chernobyl implies effects are stronger in Fukushima. Well, of course they're stronger. These reactors were, what, 15 times bigger than Chernobyl? 100% meltdown and not 30? Not to count four spent fuel pools. Yeah, Chernobyl. Nothing on Fukushima, and we're just getting started. Finally, over 50 dead seals and sea lions, whales, walruses recently stranded in Alaska. It's all again with these deaths. Big mystery. Dozens of seals suffering from baldness, skin sores. Experts quote marine transported Fukushima radiation may represent, may represent a new stressor to the ecosystem. <laughs> Yeah, I think with everything pouring out of Fukushima, every second of every day would add a little stress to the ecosystem. Not to mention the whole planet. Well, that's about all I got for you today. Of course, if I missed anything, please let me know. Attach your comments or video below. Enjoy what you can, everybody. Thanks. Tourists in central Japan gathered last weekend for an annual spring tradition. It's the start of fishing season with trained birds doing a lot of the work. Fishermen in the city of Gifu use cormorants to catch sweet fish. The practice dates back more than 1300 years. Six fishermen in traditional attire went to work on torchlit boats. They used rope leashes to guide the birds. The climax came as the evening drew to a close. Fishermen lined up the boats and uh, drove the fish into shallow water. More than a thousand people watched the spectacle. The fishing season will continue until the middle of October. An official from Gifu says more than 100,000 people are expected to visit during that time. has worked out power-saving plans for this summer. It will call on utilities across the country to conserve energy without setting up numerical targets. People in Japan have been coping with strained power supplies during peak hours since the 2011 nuclear accident. Relevant cabinet ministers decided to ask companies and households to cut back on the use of electricity between July and September. They noted that the country will be able to meet a minimum demand this summer. Nevertheless, they said the utilities should be prepared for any potential trouble at thermal power stations. All nuclear power plants in the country remain offline today. Utilities in some areas may face a possible power shortage since they heavily depend on nuclear power generation. The government will ask people in the central and western regions especially to save energy, considering the current energy situation. The government plans to ask these regional utilities to review contracts with businesses and curb consumption during peak hours. Minister said they will consider numerical targets if electricity supply falls short of demand due to unexpected incidents. Executives at Japanese electronics maker NEC are pushing ahead with a plan to expand the supply of renewable energy in Europe. Now they're carrying out uh, tests in Italy to see if they can make the power source more reliable. The executives have supplied an energy storage system to Italy's biggest power company, Enel. The system acts as a giant battery that holds reserve electricity. It's one of the most powerful in Europe. Consumers in Europe have been using more and more electricity from wind and solar power systems. But renewable energy sources are still vulnerable to weather conditions. Executives at NEC and NLS say 
If the trial goes well, they'll introduce the systems across Italy. Those at NEC are confident they can use it in other Mitsubishi countries. Mitsubishi Chemical too. Holdings are planning a takeover deal in Japan to fuel their operations abroad. They want to spend almost a billion dollars to buy a company that makes industrial gases. Mitsubishi executives are preparing a tender offer for a majority stake in Taiyo Nippon Sanso. They already own 27% of the shares. Taiyo Nippon makes nitrogen and other gases for use in chemical factories. The Mitsubishi executives want to produce nitrogen for a chemical plant that they're planning to build in the, the United States. The largest closing of a nuclear plant in the country is happening right now in Illinois. The facility is in Zion, Illinois. That's up in Lake County. Now Jim Williams shows us what it takes to properly clean up one of these sites and the dangers involved. So right now you're at point zero four. For us, it was a first an interview right next to a worker holding a radiation detector. Okay, and you're making sure that we're safe? Correct. So right now, practically nothing. You have to be this careful when crews are moving 1,500 tons of nuclear waste out of the old Zion Comet plant on the shores of Lake Michigan. The idea is to decontaminate, clean, remove. John Sager is managing the biggest closure of a nuclear plant in U.S. history. So these are brand new? Yep. The plant stopped operating 16 years ago, but what was left behind is so toxic, robots were brought in. You want to get it out quick, and you want to use equipment to do it. You don't want to have men in there using hand tools and torches. By train and truck, they're shipping the less hazardous material to Texas, Tennessee, and Utah, where it'll be buried. We have filters, uh, rags, mops, things of that nature that have been in contact with radiated material and might be contaminated. But spent nuclear fuel that had been in this cooling pool is being placed in steel cylinders called casks. Each yep. can has a custom-made cover. You can see they're rather robust. Then encased in concrete. We call this the nuclear bowling alley. Because, says Dave Kraft of a nuclear watchdog group, all 65 casks will end up here, together, above ground, next to the old plant. Kraft fears they could be a prime target for terrorists in a plane. If you have a huge fuel fire from a burning airliner, for example, it's going to affect everything around. Kraft and Paul Kokuris of the Dunalins Preservation Society worry the cask could break open, releasing radiation across the Chicago area, poisoning the lake. We are at risk here. This is the water supply for 20 million people. Those fears are not justified, according to John Sauger. What happens if a plane were to crash over there? It's a big enough airplane. One of the engines may penetrate the concrete, but not the steel liner. Today, the casks are surrounded by high fences and razor wire. Heavily armed security guards are everywhere here. Still, those measures are not enough to allay fears. The point is, uh, you're only going to get one chance to be wrong. Jim Williams reporting for us. Property managers say the closing process is taking longer than expected, but federal regulations allow 60 years to completely shut down. Companies a that make plant. drones in the U.S. are ready and waiting for takeoff. They're hoping government officials will soon relax the rules on the use on the commercial use of these un unmanned aircraft. It's a potentially multi-billion-dollar market, but some Americans worry the privacy costs could outweigh the benefits. NHK World's Kenji McCulley has the story. A recent television commercial for a Japanese luxury car brand has made waves around the world. It features swarms of small drones developed by a U.S. venture firm. Drones are unmanned aerial vehicles, some resembling helicopters, others airplanes. One maker is based in San Francisco. Engineers here are developing drones that can deliver cargo to predetermined locations, navigating by GPS systems. They see great potential in developing countries with few roads and poor infrastructure. Last year, the drones were tested in Haiti, accurately delivering cargo weighing up to three kilograms to destinations as far as 20 kilometers away. The drones are due to go on sale starting this summer for NGO groups operating in developing nations. We want to be the apple of this space. We want to be the company that defines that industry. It's an exciting industry. We believe that um, it's probably at the same uh, place that uh, the computer industry was in the 70s. 
analysts see the market for drones rising to about $80 billion in the U.S. alone. The government has set up six test sites across the country to promote private sector development. The police are also picking up on the technology. More than 10 police departments throughout the country are using drones in situations considered unsafe for officers. But there are growing privacy concerns. Your line is good. This video depicts a future in which drones are used freely. Here, drones are flying freely over San Francisco, with worried citizens fighting back. The director says he is expressing the anxiety that people feel about drones. That's a negative. When you have something that is autonomous, that where that is, you know, you've extrapolated the control from a human to basically a machine, that's obviously something that needs to be handled very carefully and very delicately, and I can very easily understand why people are um, concerned about that kind of thing. These growing concerns have already affected the police force in Oakland, California, a city with a population of one and a half million. The police department in charge of this area was planning to use drones in its emergency response unit. The department produced a video to show how drones could help in apprehending criminals who have barricaded themselves inside buildings. But after locals expressed their concerns about a potential invasion of privacy, the police department decided against pursuing the drone program at all. I think that the, the, the misconception out there that these would be um, weaponized, that these would be used for indiscriminate mass surveillance, somehow um, that, 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 I, that is where the opposition stems from. As drone technology takes off, debate on how it can be used and restricted will likely continue. Kenji McCulley, NHK World, San Francisco.